Hey, what's up, Joe 200? What is today? Sunday, June 9th. And uh, yeah, so we're going to do the second lecture for this fourth week and uh, continue on with our our deep dive into the kind of economic consequences of aging. And this time around, we're going to be looking at um, how well the U.S. of A is, how well our country is doing. So as promised, um, uh, what I'm doing is I'm being the digital nomad, uh, and I'm actually here in uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, sorry, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, for the taping of a show that um, both you and I are going to be participating in uh, about Health Explored. I'll tell you all about that in a sec, but just wanted to kind of show you what what we're looking at here. All right, so this right here, guys, is. Um, outside our window, we're staying at the uh, Alt Hotel in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, in Canada. And uh, yeah, we did a great taping yesterday, and I, I got some story to tell you too, as well. Okay, so let me get back over here and I'm gonna set myself up for my recording. And uh, we're gonna do some economics here. I'm sitting on the floor in my hotel room, which is awesome. Okay, um, before we get going on that, um, I just want to kind of show you what it is that, that we are doing here. And, uh, and you know, we just got back from two weeks in Costa Rica where we were uh, had a great opportunity to do a full immersion of 21 USC students and uh, into what Blue Zones are all about and why longevity happens there. And what, what is unique about the... Um, government situation down in Costa Rica, but also what is unique about the uh, the types of lives that these people live, their communities, their diet, their exercise, etc. And so uh, uh, I was contacted by uh, Michael Wall and uh, he asked that we come up to Canada and he's going to include us in this series. It's going to be in the future be part of a Netflix series, all right? And I just wanted to kind of show you what this all looks like right now. Michael Wall is a professor at Memorial University here in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. I have a question. Does anyone actually know what health is? Is it the pursuit of happiness? Is it finding order in chaos? Is it having a purpose in life and finding connection? Or is it pushing our limits and being one with our planet? Maybe it's as simple as just enjoying life. Health is a journey, and it's meant to be explored. Awesome. So this uh, year, that was 2023, is 2024 um, segment of this this amazing uh, documentary series. He's looking at Costa Rica, and so he he's been there before, but he wanted to get our perspective on it and why it was so important to expose you guys, USA students, to it. So. Yeah, pretty wild, pretty wild stuff, okay? All right, just to give you another little bit of insight here uh, in terms of what we were doing, this is us filming uh, yesterday, all righty? And, uh, and that's, he's a pretty simple production crew, but he's got amazing staff behind the scenes that it gets things going on. And then uh, he said, hey, you know what? I want to take you surfing. So I was surfing in water that was 87 degrees in Costa Rica last week. And today, uh, so it was actually today, I went surfing in water that was 40 degrees. Uh, and uh, Newfoundland is the most eastern part of North America. It's incredible. And so this is pictures of me surfing with Michael. This is the, the after effect. He had a special wetsuit for me that was super thick. It actually wasn't that cold, which was amazing. And uh, uh, this is after filming yesterday. This is a little uh, community just outside um, 
uh, St. John's called Quitty Vitty, and uh, this is us this morning and checking the waves, and uh, that was uh, me on the board going out there. It was pretty pretty wild, and uh, uh, it, this was the community that we were surfing at, and again, another, another cool photo of me surfing. So I'm ecstatic, and uh, that was what you just saw right there. Uh, well, you know, you, you go for life, guys, and you get as much as you can out of it. All right, let's go back to the class here, okay? Let's see where we're at here, okay? So uh, like I said, we're in the fourth week, and uh, I'm going to go straight up into the syllabus just so you have uh, a, a, a clear view in terms of how to schedule the rest of, of the, this quick summer semester, okay? So we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here because that's where the meat and potatoes is uh, for the syllabus, okay? And uh, as we get down here, we're going to look at our weeks, okay? And uh, and Julie took care of this entire syllabus. It's amazing. All right. So we went through week one, week two, week three. Remember we had two modules in week three. Um, we were looking at uh, some of the issues following up on, on the biology and caregiving. And then we were looking at the economics. And so we, well, we did a global overview. And so uh, what we're doing today is we're going to look at economic preparation for retirement and look at our country and look at how we stack up okay and you're gonna see we we get a kind of a c grade and uh it's scary because uh um people aren't going anywhere but they're gonna need a lot a lot of help okay what else do you see co coming down the, the pipe you did ct1 thank you guys it's all graded everything's graded everything check out the you know Jill and i put in lots of feedback in there um you have mid midterm one that is available to you all week long okay you just once you go into it you take two hours okay unless you have osas accommodations uh we'll be sending out a study guide tomorrow for that if you're um if you want to if you're a gunner you want to go after it more power to you okay and then um again this is a semester so uh and it's fast so you can see right over here uh, this is the second um uh, writing assignment where you're going to get some data and this is one really cool brand new AARP website so you know don't look at what some of your friends have done in previous years because we changed things up we changed it up for CT1 and we're changing it up for this and it, it's it's cool you're going to enter your information and see how much money you can make through investing in compound interest interest so that's really cool all right that's what that's all about. Okay, so let's just get right back into the skinny here of the class. Okay, um, I'm going to go into the content and we're going to be looking at um, the United States of America and asking ourselves, you know, how do we stack up? Okay, so we're going to scroll on down here. So this is where we were looking at, um, you know, some of the clear social impacts. We're looking globally, we're looking at our country. We saw how we stacked up as a country compared to other countries. And now we're gonna see how we stack up in our country, all right? Which is scary, believe me, okay? All righty. And again, thank you, Julia, for these, for these graphics. The infographics are pretty amazing, pretty amazing stuff, okay? All righty, so uh, we'll get into the discussion. Don't forget, you can always open the quiz as a second window in your existing browser or in a, se or in a, in a totally separate browser. So let's get into the meat and potatoes, okay, for this section, okay, and so you know what is our goals? What are we doing here, okay? So in this assignment, um, it's to prepare you for the broad social implications of how well our population in the United States has prepared for retirement, okay? Um, because you know you're going to look at you and your cohort of people, okay, and you're going to do well and you're going to be investing and it's all good, okay. But there's a huge segment of the community, the big broader community, that are really, really sad. And uh, we saw that previously when we were looking at the videos, people like uh, those featured in Nomadland, where they're very hand to mouth, they're 70 years of age, they can't find work, they, um, they may have limited social security and they have no retirement. Okay, so. Um, so we're going to ask ourselves, you know, what percentage of people in our in our country have any form of retirement, okay? And um, and then we're going to hone it down, okay, and, and look at the real realities of that. You know, what, how much do we actually have based on, say, age? Okay, obviously it's class on aging, but we're also going to look at the um, the the, the Im immense disparities, okay, across our country 
based on your cultural background, okay? And to see how uneven this is, and it all has to do with opportunity and something that you guys have to change, all right? We're gonna ask what percentage of, of people in our country that are of retirement age are relying solely on Social Security, okay? And does, does Social Security cost cover the cost of living? You know, well, what do you think? Absolutely not. It does not cover the cost of living, all right? All righty. So uh, that being said, okay, um, each generation, you know, how do we spend our money, okay? Um, if you're poor, you're spending it on rent, not enough even for food and for health care. We will see that, okay? When you're doing better like Julie and I, okay, then we're going to be spending our money on on entertainment and 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 uh, improving the lives of our children, things like that. So it's a trickle down effect. Okay, um, so what kind of budgeting should you start thinking about? So we'll be looking at that. Okay, <clears throat> set up some goals for retirement investing for yourself, and then um, in subsequent uh, modules, then we're going to guide you in how to invest your money. All right. Um, we're not going to do the real estate component, but we're going to do something that's pretty simple. And it's like when you get a job, you do a 401k, okay, you ask if it's matching, we're going to get into that. And then, or if you are um, a small businessman, you have your own company, how you set up IRAs and Roth IRAs, annuities and things like that. That's coming down the pike, okay? Alrighty, so what we do is we always provide the resources. This is a Wall Street Journal article that was incredible, okay? Um, it was from uh, 2023, so it's very up to date. And uh, so we're going to go through the figures that are relevant. If you want to go into the article, you're all good. You can do that. So what you do is just kind of go through what we've set up here and 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 study it and understand how it works. And then that's how you do your quiz. That's how you do um, uh, the midterm. And uh, this is really just, you know, how you guide your life, okay? All right, so we already know this, okay? People over the age of 65, the projections are enormous in terms of the percent population, okay? So we're not going anywhere, and we, be, we are this situation, okay? Sometimes a burden, okay? Sometimes a benefit, okay? It's, it's, it just depends on uh, the individual and where they stand, okay? All right, so just look at something right here. Let's just look at the United States, okay? And we're going to look at the average household retirement savings. So this this is retirement income that has been put away. Okay, we're going to look at but based on age group. Okay, anytime you see average, you have to remember. Okay, that this is going to be skewed. Okay, it's going to be skewed by people that have very little, but even more so, it's going to be skewed by the Elon Musk's. Okay, um, the uh, Donald Trumps. Okay. The people that have enormous amount of assets. Okay, so we look by age group on average. Your guys, you don't have a whole lot going on right here. Okay, we're looking in thousands of dollars. Okay, all right. We see the average by 65 is four hundred thousand dollars saved. Um, that's nothing, <laughs> you guys. By the way, 400 grand is not going to get you anywhere. Okay, you think about the cost of living. The cost of uh, running our uh, household, okay, is probably pretty close to a couple hundred grand a year. Okay, you are retired and you only got 400. What's happening after two to three years? All right, now let's look at something that's a little more realistic. Okay, that's not skewed by the heavy earners. Okay, and um, so, uh, yeah, this, you know, this, we don't have, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, weighting this down because we're going to look at the median. This is where we stack all oh, 333, what was it, 337 million people in the United States and we stack them all up, okay? And, um, and then we go to the middle, and, okay, and this is the middle amount, okay? And people that are less, than, and we did it by age group. So that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean in terms of um, stacking everybody up by age group. Millions here, millions there, whatever it is, okay? People less than 35, okay, the median, there's not a whole lot there. You know, less than 14 grand is put away, okay? As you get older, okay, your jobs get better, okay? You're able to stow away, and when I say stow away, when we're talking about retirement income, you just pretend it's not even there. You just put it into investments and you look the other way because you're going to rely upon that when you're all done with working, okay? So we see here 
Um, of course, it's getting bigger as people get older, older, older. But again, um, that was the average. We're looking down here now at the median, and it's not like the average. Okay, we see here a third. We see we saw over here that the 35 to 45, you know, was you know close to 140,000. But here the median is 91. Okay, and we get down here, 75 years of age or 65 to 74, the median. Okay, and this is not just retirement income, this is total net worth of your household. All right, so we're going to look at the value of your cars, your house, your investments, and then we're going to subtract what your liabilities are you know, things like your credit card debt, your student loan debts, um, the mortgage that you're paying on. Okay, and we see here that that's, that's not a huge amount of net worth for these people. I, you know, I would hope that you guys will be worth maybe 2.6 million, not $266,000, right? So this is kind of like um, shock and awe because there's so many people in our country, you know, that that still need to be supported. And they're not going anywhere, you know. We see, you know, the worst case scenario, we see this growing, growing unhoused homeless population all across the country that are 65, 75 years of age. All right now, if you we saw the, in the previous um, uh, uh, module this week, we saw uh, the impact of being a low wage earner your whole life. Okay, and one impact of that is that there is a, uh, um, a calculation that is made uh, by the Social Security Administration uh, based on how much money you're making, and that calculation then spits out how much you're going to get when you retire in terms of your monthly or your annual Social Security benefit, okay? And we look here, the average benefit in our country is less than $2,000, okay, a month, okay? That is not a lot of money, okay? That means if you have no um, um, assets, okay, you have, we're going to learn that 30% of people over the age of 65 have zero um, saved in terms of retirement income, zero assets, and they're living solely on so Social Security, okay? Their Social Security is going to be indexed at a lower value, and they're going to be living on two grand a month, which is, yeah, on average. There's many people over here that were kind of off the grid, and they're going to be living on $1,000 a month, okay? Even for me, I've been a high in income earner my whole life, you know? So, um, if I were to retire at 66.7, that's the recommended retirement age, okay, um, I'd be making 43 grand a year or a uh, little under $4,000 a month, okay. I'm not going anywhere, okay. I'm going to take it full tilt. I'm going to retire after age 70, and then this is, uh, you know, why would I get walk away from my salary? I'm doing well. And then this is how much I will then make in Social Security monthly, uh, 40, going from this 3600 to almost $1,000 more, and you can see that my, my annual Social Security income will be approaching fifty five grand a year, okay? But if you're these guys, you're screwed, okay? All right, so let's continue on, okay? So we can look, okay, um, about, um, you know, we saw the medians and the means and retirement savings. Let's, let's see how Americans are stacking up. So we went to another, this is the Federal Reserve Board, okay? Um, they determine interest rates and, and they look at the economic well-being of our country and, um, and we look from their report and this again was a, a, a recent report and they're asking us and the, the question, okay, Americans, okay, what, what percentage of you have uh, any type of um, retirement income and, and then we look at, when we're looking at it, Let's see what it, how it's stacked up, all right? So 55% of Americans have what's called the defined contribution pension. This is where you take your money, your own money that you've earned and put it into a retirement account. Only 55%, all right? So that's pretty significant in terms of, you know, what's going on with the other 45%, okay? There's, um, there's another one that is a guaranteed pension that the firemen make, the police officers, Congress, president, okay, that's a separate, separate entity, okay, all righty, so, um, and then you ask yourselves, okay, all right, all right, just um, savings that are not in retirement accounts, okay, this is what people are doing, and 52% have some of that, okay, um, 
And then we'll talk about individual retirement accounts, okay? This is uh, something that you do on your own. This is a, an employer-based system that we're going to learn about, okay? So they set it up. You can put a lot more money into it and, and, and you have re, uh, reduced taxation for big chunks of money, or you can do individual amounts. We're going to have you guys, if you start working, to do your own what's called a Roth individual retirement account. And uh, But, you know, very few people are doing this, okay? This is the pension plan uh, that exists for all government workers that I was talking about, okay? This is just another category. Uh, this is the number of people that have had enough assets that they could um, invest in real estate. It's one of those things I wish I had done, but we, did, we didn't. And then you see 25% of, of, so this is looking at how it, um, all the people, so you could have multiple hits on this in terms of you know, those people in the United States, but you see 25% have nothing, all right? All right, so let's scroll down here. And so this is uh, from the same article, stacking it up by age group. So you have any type of retirement saving, any, all right? So we see oh, people over the age of 60, 87% do. But did you do well, all right? Or 45, uh, 59. 84% have some type of retirement savings based on all the categories we just saw in the previous slide. But are you ready? And you see most people say no. So half of Americans are like, God, I am so not on track. Okay. We can then look at the cultural disparity. We can compare people that um, are white, black, Hispanic, and Asian. And uh, again, this is a percentage of people that um, have any form of Retirement could be real estate, okay? Could be an IRA, could be a 401k, okay? Uh, and then once again, are you on track? And you see that there is a huge cultural disparity. You know, under half of white people are, but we see that black Americans only 26% are, and uh, Hispanics only 25%. And then the Asian American population is actually doing best here, okay? Here's another cultural disparity, okay? Do you live with a disability, a chronic disability, okay? And we see that when uh, you look at no disability, okay, so 80% have some type of retirement savings, 79%. Okay, If you have a disability, half of these people have zero, zero retirement savings. And then this is the part that's, that's really scary on track. So this 43 would be all this average together. Only 17% believe they're on track, all right? Scary, 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 scary stuff, okay? All right, so we can look, again, different ways from the same article. We can look at um, retirement account ownership rates by, by the demographics, the cultural groups that we're talking about. This is by age, this is by sex, and this is by um, uh, race and ethnic or origin. And you see, once again, um, as you would predict, okay, um, Account um, ownership goes up and up and up as you get a, uh, get older. Still, big chunks have nothing. Just subtract that from 100, okay? Um, we see a disparity between men and women, okay? And then really, really just uh, the inequities in our society. You see these huge cultural disparities right here in terms of um, uh, the different uh, um, um, races and, and origins of your culture, okay? All right, now... We saw that, so there's a big chunk of people, 30% roughly, they're living only on Social Security, two grand a month, okay? But here's the reality, okay? When you get older, we saw in the previous week, and we'll see it again here, that we have a huge issue, and this is part of your discussion. This is the cost of healthcare, all right? So the older you get, the more your premium is, okay? And then you have lots of out-of-pocket pockets and additional. So we see health insurance, the cost of health insurance, medical service, drugs, medical supplies. And you see people over age 65. This is the average cost of health care annually. Imagine you're, you're making 24 grand a year, okay? And almost a third of your income is going towards just covering health care costs. So this is huge, huge problem, guys, that... that you have to figure out because it's only going to get worse and we have to remember that okay all right so this is another cool article that it shows us the same thing okay but it's showing us here uh, at the level of the table okay and again uh, the average spending on health care okay um you can see that on average 20 percent of 
income, okay, is being spent on healthcare. Now, there are some people where it's 50% it's of income, so it's a big deal. And we can look at this across, again, age groups. All righty. So in this same article, then, um, we're looking at um, how much money do you spend to live on average? Again, this is uh, looking backwards, 2021 here, okay? And what you see is that when we start going, this is your generation right here. So your living expenses are not so enormous. So this is how much you have to spend to live. It's your ranch, it's your car, it's your gas, you know, insurance, it's your food, entertainment, all that kind of stuff. So people are living um, um, in your generation on almost 42 grand a year, okay? And then we see as it goes up and up and up, again, this is average, so my, my expenses are more. It is what it is, okay? So I wouldn't fit into this category. But it goes up and up and up and up. And then you see that then um, as you get older, this is my parents' generation, this is me, this is Julie and I. So you start having less expenditures. Pretty soon we won't have a mortgage, okay? Um, gas costs, if I, if I retire, would be reduced, okay? Um, you know, my entertainment costs, you see I'm going crazy here, but there, there's going to become a time where I'm not going to be able to travel as much as I do, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Okay, um, so we're looking over here. Uh, again, we're looking at um, when we look at costs, okay, and how much we're spending. So this is my total spending right here. And then we can kind of hone it down into a couple different categories. We'll look at two categories. How much it costs for people on average in my age group and your age group for housing. And what, what is that percent of your total expenditure? Okay, so these are economics right here, okay? So um, my parents' generation, uh, 16 grand on housing, okay? Smaller percentage, okay? Me, okay, 21% uh, on housing, okay? Um, I do more things, so this is, even though it's, it's more on housing, uh, as a percentage of my total expenditures, it's going to be reduced right here. Your generation right here, okay, this is on average how much you're going to spend on housing, and you see this is a bigger chunk, okay? How about entertainment, okay, all right? Going to Canada, going to Costa Rica, whatever that is, how much you're going to spend, and what is that percentage of your total expenditures, okay? So... You know, my parents, they're too, too old, so entertainment is getting reduced. Right here, we're going crazy, and this is your parents right here, okay? So, <clears throat> on average, you know, spending anywhere from five to three grand a year on fun, okay, on entertainment, okay? And this is the percentage of my total spending, okay? Um, I have healthcare costs, that's one percentage. I have housing, that's another percentage. I have food, that's another percentage. And then we have entertainment, okay? Um, and you see that uh, you guys, okay, um, you know, 4% four, four or more, just depends. Okay, but that's on average, okay? All righty, so um, how are you going to set yourself up? Okay, so we're going to get into this next week, but this is what you should be dialing in this is, should be your expectation okay you guys will be 30 before you know it okay and by the age of 30 you should have okay um uh the equivalent of your annual salary already saved by age 30 okay so that's put away into a retirement account that will now churn okay through investment uh compound interest and so that when you are 65 or 7 years of age that 55 grand will hopefully be worth maybe a couple million okay you keep putting that in right we're going to see how that works okay uh by age 40 you should have three times your income saved all right by age 50 you should have six times whatever your income save is. so and again your income is going to be increasing so you're going to have to be saving more and more okay and by age 67 Okay, I just blew by that. I'm June 30th, okay, I'll be 68. Um, you need to have 10 times your income saved in terms of assets to retire and be able to live the kind of lifestyle that you've grown accustomed to, all right? Awesome, very cool um, section, you know, really well designed. I hope you guys appreciate it. And so now we get into the discussion. Okay, then in this discussion, then we're gonna look at the issues especially for those people that sadly got left behind okay so 
do this is your prompt. Do you think social security security system is adequate in addressing the economic needs of older adults? Well, obviously no. Okay, um, but is it your responsibility, or is it you know for people that slip through the cracks? Is it the government's responsibility to care for this? Okay, we're going to talk about this um, um, also, and that um, you know the reality is. Um, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and John Walsh, okay, um, we pay for Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes up to $160,000 of income that we earn annually. And anything we earn past that, we don't pay anymore, all right? Now, somebody that, you know, is the um, dishwasher who's 67 years of age, okay, they still do because they're only making 30 grand a year if they're lucky, okay? So they are paying that um, that percentage of Social Security that we're going to talk about in a second for their entire salary, you know? So maybe, maybe we should be paying more, okay? But still getting the same benefit because based on a means base, maybe I should... Uh, we have to disclose how much I have put away, and they'll say, you know what, maybe you, I know you've earned it, but maybe you don't need to have so much Social Security, all right? That's something to think about, okay? Um, all right, so when we look at the healthcare costs, we just talk about this, okay? And we'll show this in the discussion again. Um, are, are we a compassionate society when it comes to healthcare? Should we, should socialized medicine, which is Medicare, do more so that 50% of a person's Social Security income is not consumed by health care costs, okay? These are duct deductibles, out-of-pocket expenses, and just the cost of insurance, okay? And think about how costs, health care costs disproportionately affect you the older you get and if you are a female, okay? All right, so is this fair? No, all right? So you can get into this and look at the details, okay? Okay. Um, we're putting it out here. So this was a, a publication put out in 2012. It looked at 2013, okay? And um, for people, okay, uh, we all go on to Medicare um, when we, we are uh, 65 years of age. I can defer this, okay, because I'm doing my own private health insurance, okay? A little bit of a can of worms to do it, but that's what we're going to do. Um, but if I were to look at my cost of health insurance, all the components, okay? So the, the premium is how much I pay every month, the deductibles, okay? How much Medicare doesn't cover, um, all the out-of-pocket expenses. There's certain things, you know, for example, I like uh, sleeping pills. I like Ambien, also called Zolpidem. Medicare won't cover that, okay? So all these out-of-pocket expenses. And we see here in 2013, if you looked at somebody's Social Security, 41% was um, being devoted to paying for all these out-of-pocket health care expenses. Now, not a bad deal for me. I've got all kinds of retirement income. But what about that person living solely on Social Security? It's a big deal. We see that the cost of health care is going to rise. 2030, we'll see uh, it's almost 10% more, 50%. All right? So you can dive deeper into this. So this gets into, you know, the thing that I was talking about. In terms of your Social Security tax, okay? So um, I pay 6.2%, USC pays 6.2%, it's 12.4, okay? But it's capped at 160 grand, right? So I'm not paying any more past, you know, that 160 grand in terms of my Social Security income, all right? So we see right here, same drill, Medicare, maybe we need to increase this, okay? Um, it's 1.5% I pay, it. USA pays the other 1.5%. 2.9%, but it's capped at my income of 160 when I make 160,200. So if I make 160,201, that $1 does not have any Social Security and Medicare tax taken from it. Okay. All righty. So um, the problem is, okay, um, the, the money is taken in out of your paycheck. Okay. It's invested into uh, kind of the government's uh, retirement income. It's called the Social Security Trust, okay? Um, same deal with Medicare. And then for years, it was huge because all the baby boomers were working and the money grew. And so the interest was spun off, okay? And so when it was time to pay somebody Social Security, um, it was, the principal was fine. You know, we were just, you know, uh, taking the benefit, the interest in, in paying everybody off, 
okay? Problem is, too many people are retired now, not enough people paying in the system, the costs are enormous, and so um, these trusts are running out of money, okay? So Medicare is predicted to fall short in 2028. This actually, the last report I've heard is it's getting earlier, 2026. And so security is gonna fall short of, uh, of income in 2030-ish in that range, okay? What that means now is that now you have to go into the principal and start removing it. And that is a downward spiral in terms of government funding these social service programs, okay? It's crazy, all right? So think about this right here, again, the prompts. And then to, uh, to give you some perspective, we have um, how social security works, okay? As I was just telling you about it right here. So these are kind of older videos, but they kind of play out how it's going. But the, here's the new reality, and this is what you really have to watch, okay? And it just shows you, this is an amazing video right here, put out by C, um, CNBC that talks about the realities of, of um, many uh, um, retirees, their benefits, okay? not matching their expenses, okay? And what are we gonna do? And your generation is gonna be forced to fix this, okay? So this is really, really worth watching. Okay, all right, guys. So um, peace on that, okay? I'm gonna get my, find myself my recorder here, right there, there, and I'm going to say stop and pause. Um, hope you guys appreciated this lecture. Um, email, see if I have any problems. Uh, we're going to be going home from Canada. So the next week's lectures will be back from Laguna Niguel, and uh, and you take care.